Have you ever wondered what strength unity and cooperation could summon? Let's travel back to a time of religious strife and political intrigue, to a magical kingdom where a young man named George of Potabrady was thrown into the unexpected role of king. Despite his youth and non-Catholic faith, George was determined to do the unthinkable, to unite his divided land. In the midst of this turmoil, a prophecy emerged. A powerful dragon symbolizing the ongoing wars and discord among the people was plaguing the kingdom. The prophecy foretold that only the true king could defeat this beast and bring peace to the land. George, armed with tenacity and a heart filled with hope, knew what he had to do. He had the support of his loyal friends and a wise wizard to guide him, fueling his resolve. And so George, with the weight of prophecy on his shoulders, set forth on his journey. Can a single king unite diverse lands? Or does it take a kingdom to raise a king? As young King George of Potabrady pondered this, he embarked on a journey, a quest if you will, to truly understand his kingdom and its people. His travels took him to the farthest reaches of his lands, from the towering mountains to the vast plains, from bustling cities to the quietest hamlets. He met his subjects, people of different faiths and beliefs, and listened to their stories. He encountered Catholics and Protestants, Jews and Muslims and many others, each with their own unique perspectives and experiences. These encounters opened his eyes to the rich tapestry of his kingdom, a diverse land full of potential, yet torn apart by discord. In the heart of this tumultuous land, George saw the opportunity for unity. He understood that the strength of his kingdom lay not in its uniformity, but in its diversity. And so he proposed an alliance, a union of lands, each contributing their unique strengths and resources for the benefit of all. And thus, the kingdom union was born. The towering mountains contributed their sturdy stone for fortifications, the vast plains their bountiful crops for sustenance, the bustling cities their skilled craftsmen for innovation, and the quiet hamlets their wisdom and traditions for guidance. Each land, each faith, each person, had something unique to offer, and together, formed a formidable alliance. But it wasn't just material contributions that strengthened the Kingdom Union, it was the shared sense of purpose, the collective will to work together for the common good, that truly united them. They understood that their differences didn't have to divide them, instead, they could be their greatest strength. This was George's vision, a kingdom united not by force, but by mutual respect and cooperation. A kingdom where every voice mattered, every contribution valued. A kingdom where diversity was celebrated, not feared. A kingdom that was stronger together than it ever could be apart. Can a single king unite diverse lands? Or does it take a kingdom to raise a king? In the end it was clear. Together they were stronger than they had ever been apart. Do you believe that unity can conquer even the fiercest of dragons? In the heart of our tale, young King George, emboldened by the power of unity, stands tall against the menacing dragon that has plagued his kingdom. The air is thick with anticipation as George and his allies face the dragon, its fiery breath casting dancing shadows on the faces of our heroes. This is not a battle of brute force alone, no, it is a battle where wisdom, bravery and unity are their only true weapons. The dragon, fierce and powerful, symbolizes the discord and division that have torn the kingdom apart. Against this formidable foe, George's courage does not falter. He is not just a king, but also a symbol of hope, a beacon that guides his people through the dark. George's allies, the diverse people of his kingdom, stand with him. They are the embodiment of the kingdom union, each contributing their unique strength to the battle. The blacksmith's sturdy shields, the farmer's relentless resilience, the scholar's insightful strategies, and the priest's unwavering faith, all these form a harmonious symphony of unity against the discordant roar of the dragon. The battle is fierce, the stakes high, but with each blow they trade with the dragon, the bond of the kingdom union only strengthens. They fight not as separate entities but as a single, united force. Their unity, born from mutual respect and understanding, becomes their mightiest weapon, their protective shield, their guiding light in the face of adversity. With a final, decisive blow, the dragon is defeated. But as it falls, an extraordinary transformation takes place. The menacing beast, once a symbol of discord and division, morphs into a symbol of peace and unity. It is then that the true enemy becomes clear. The enemy was never the dragon. The enemy was the discord and division that had once torn their kingdom apart. 
Their unity, their cooperation, their shared belief had conquered this enemy. It was not the dragon they had defeated, but their own fears and prejudices. But as the dragon fell, it transformed, revealing the true enemy they had fought. What if the real dragon we fight is not a beast, but our own discord and division? With these words we delve into the final chapter of our tale, the legacy of unity left behind by George of Potterbrady. The dragon, once a symbol of fear and chaos, had transformed into an emblem of peace and unity, its fiery breath now a warm glow of harmony. This transformation was not brought about by a magical sword or a powerful spell, but by the collective strength and unity of a kingdom. The people had realized that the true dragon they had been fighting was not the beast that roamed their lands, but the discord and division among themselves. Under George's reign the kingdom flourished. The once fragmented lands were now bound together, not by the chains of conquest, but by the bonds of mutual respect and cooperation. The people of the kingdom, regardless of their faith or beliefs, worked together for the prosperity of all. And in this unity, they found not just peace but also strength, strength to face any dragon that might come their way. The prosperity that followed was not just of gold or jewels, but of ideas and values. The Kingdom Union became a beacon of unity and cooperation, its light reaching far beyond its borders, and it was this light that guided the Kingdom through the Dark Ages and into a new era. George's reign was not just a golden era of peace and prosperity, it was a testament to the power of unity. His legacy was not just a united kingdom, but an enduring ideal that transcended time and geography. An ideal that taught us that true strength lies not in division, but in unity. Not in conflict, but in cooperation. And as we look upon the European Union today, we see George's legacy of unity and cooperation, a testament to the power of coming together. His story reminds us that the dragons we face are not beasts to be slain, but challenges to be overcome. Challenges that can only be conquered when we stand together, united in purpose and spirit.